This video will look at how to pass a psychometric test. So in this session, we're going to look at what is a psychometric test and what that involves. We're also going to look at what types of psychometric tests are used in today's recruitment. We're also going to examine how to best prepare for a psychometric test and also where you can go to practice these tests in advance as well. So what are psychometric tests? Psychometric tests are assessments used during recruitment processes to assess a candidate's suitability for the job and organisation. Psychometric tests typically present as standardised assessments, which are designed to measure an individual's psychological attributes, abilities and personality traits. A variety of different testing methods are used in the recruitment process, from verbal reasoning to situational judgment tests. Recruiters may use one or more different types of testing during their recruitment process. The types of tests you may encounter will vary depending on the job role or the sector you are operating in. Psychometric tests are typically online assessments or computer-based tests. You will also likely be under a time limit during your assessment with your answers scored objectively according to predefined criteria established by the employer or recruiter. So the first area we're going to cover is the most common types of psychometric tests that are currently used in recruitment. So here are the four most common types of psychometric tests you may encounter during the recruitment process. Firstly, we have numerical reasoning tests. Here you are provided with a numerical data set alongside a series of questions. These questions aim to challenge your understanding of the numerical data set you have been provided. These tests typically require numerical interpretation, basic calculations and logical reasoning to do successfully. You may also encounter verbal reasoning tests. Here, instead of numerical information, you are provided with some written information and provides some questions with the aim to challenge your understanding of that written information. So you're typically required to answer questions that help you draw conclusions and evaluate arguments related to the written data set. You may also encounter abstract reasoning tests. These frequently involve patterns of information and re requires the use of pattern recognition and logic in order to accurately predict the next sequence in the pattern. And finally, situational judgment tests. So here you're presented with a hypothetical work related scenario and you are asked to choose the most appropriate response from a set of different options. So we are now going to look at the four common types of psychometric testing in a little bit more detail. Firstly, starting with numerical reasoning tests. So numerical reasoning tests typically involve table and graph questions. So essentially you're provided with a table and or a graph with a data set involved and you'll be asked questions that challenge your understanding and interpretation of that data set. So this puts your arithmetic skills to the challenge and it also challenges your ability to quickly calculate ratios and or percentages in a certain time frame. You may also get non-calculator numerical tests. This contains a mix of word problems, mental arithmetic and other calculations. This may also involve word problems which will also challenge your quick mental arithmetic calculation. And you also may get a number series where you're presented with a numerical sequence that follows a logical rule based on elementary arithmetic. So who uses numerical reasoning tests? So numerical reasoning tests are commonly used in industries and professions that require strong numerical ability and analytical skills. So if you're applying for the role of a data analyst, then it's very likely you may encounter a numerical reasoning test as part of that recruitment process. You may also encounter these tests in different industries, such as finance, consulting, accounting, engineering, and civil service. Although it is not limited to these industries and you may encounter those outside of these areas. It is important to note that these tests are likely to come up when you are applying for a role which really challenges you in certain skills such as analytical and numerical ability, any role that prioritises those skill set are very likely to employ numerical reasoning tests. So here is a quick example of a numerical reasoning test question. So here you are given a table 
with a varied data set. And then we've got a question on the left challenging your understanding of the table on the screen. This will be followed up with multiple varied questions around this data set and around after three or four questions you'll be moved on to a different data set with new unique questions challenging your understanding of the next data set as well. So this is just a visual idea of what these questions tend to look like in practice. So next we're moving on to verbal reasoning tests. So these are a bit different to the numerical reasoning tests in that it involves written information as opposed to numerical information. So the purpose of these tests are really to evaluate a person's ability to understand and analyse written information as opposed to numerical information. So a big part of these tests is being able to effectively interpret that written information. So these tests may involve, for example, reading passages or statements and answering questions based on the information provided. And there is a strong degree of problem solving involved as well. So you really will be assessed on your comprehension, critical thinking, logical reasoning, and problem solving abilities using verbal or written material. So who uses verbal reasoning tests? So verbal reasoning skills are highly valued in professions that require good communication skills analytical thinking and the ability to work with complex information. So by extension of that, in terms of industries, you may very well encounter these types of tests in professions such as law, journalism, management and academia, where being able to understand written information and have pos having positive verbal communication skills are extremely crucial in undertaking these roles very successfully. So again, here is an example of a verbal reasoning question. So it's a similar format to the numerical reasoning test example in the sense that you're provided with a data set and then you're given questions to challenge your understanding of that data set. But instead of numerical information, you're provided a written passage that you are to read through and dissect, analyze and then answer questions to challenge that understanding. So next, that brings us on to abstract reasoning tests. So abstract reasoning tests are all about pattern recognition. So you may be given a sequence and you need to predict what the next element is in that sequence. So pattern recognition is of key importance when undertaking abstract reasoning tests. So you will be presented with nonverbal prompts, irregular shapes and complex patterns during these tests that don't look like anything you'd typically deal with in your daily life. And problem solving is a key skill that is really important and is tested upon when undertaking these tests. So, for example, these tests typically involve figuring out the underlying rule in a given sequence or pattern and then applying this rule to solve a problem. So who uses abstract reasoning tests? So they're often used in positions that demand problem solving ability. Also, they will be used in areas that involve dealing with complex data or concepts, developing strategies or policies, or when performing non-routine tasks where initiative is required as well. By extension of that, you may encounter these tests in certain industries, such as business and management, engineering, architecture, and computing and technology. But like the past two, they are not limited to these industries, but they may be more common in these industries. So it's always worth having some degree of knowledge on this type of testing as well. So again, here is an example of an abstract reasoning test question. So in both of these examples, you're provided with a pattern and you are asked to complete the sequence and fill out the blank at the end of the sequence. And this requires a bit of problem solving and pattern recognition to undertake effectively. And finally, that brings us on to situational judgment tests. So situational judgment tests can be a little bit tricky because unlike the past test types we've looked at so far, there's not necessarily a strong sense of objective truth in the answers you provide. And the answers can be subjective to the interpretation based on what the organisation sees as the best action based on the role or organisation you're applying for. So situational judgment tests, they typically involve assessing work scenarios. 
So you'll be evaluated on your individual judgment and decision making abilities in certain work related scenarios. Your decision making will be put to the test. Uh, you'll be asked to choose the most appropriate response or rank response options based on their effectiveness in a certain work based scenario. So these are used to evaluate candidates in the recruitment process as they assess how well individuals can apply their judgment to solve problems and make decisions in realistic work context. So who uses situational judgment tests? They're often used in recruitment to evaluate a candidate's behavioral competencies, problem solving skills, and also their general fit within the organization's culture. So by extension of that, you may encounter these types of tests in human resources, healthcare, civil service, management and engineering. Again, not limited to these industries, situational judgments tend to be used quite broadly. So it's always worth having some good knowledge around these types of tests to prepare, as these are used quite broadly in a variety of different industries and sectors. So here is an example of a situational judgment question. So here they provided a work based scenario for a bit of context, and then they have given a unique situation below that takes place in the scenario you've been presented with. And then you're given the choice to identify which of the following actions you're most likely to perform and which are you least likely to perform. So the idea is you use the information above to help assess what you believe is the best decision in this scenario. So that covers the most common types of psychometric tests, but there are also plenty of different types of tests that could come up during the recruitment process. For example, technical tests are very common for technical roles. So in technical tests, you'll be assessed on your technical knowledge related to the role. So you may be challenged in areas such as programming, data analysis, or any other relevant technical skills. In these circumstances, it's really important to understand the role you're being hired for and understand the programs, tools, and systems that is uh, used within that role, as you may be challenged on your understanding and competency with those tools and programs. You also may get an intray exercise. So essentially this simulates the typical work environment by presenting the candidate with a set of documents, emails, and other items that will be typically found in an email inbox. And you'll be given some form of task around that. You also may encounter written tests, which involve writing an essay, email, letter, or report on a given topic. Though you may sometimes be asked to proofread, review, or summarize a document as well. And finally, case study interviews. So this is where you may be described the situation and you'll need to respond with advice in the form of a report or a verbal explanation. So these are a few other examples. There are still a variety of other different types of testing methods used within recruitment, um, but these are some more examples. It's good to really understand the job you're being advertised for and the company as well, so you can better plan and prepare for what testing methods they may use throughout. So that then leads us on to how do you best prepare for a psychometric test. So the most obvious solution to preparing for a psychometric test is just to practice. So there are plenty of resources online to help you practice for the most common types of psychometric tests. So definitely practice as this will help you become used to working on a screen as tests are typically done on a computer. You will also become more familiar with the types of questions that can typically come up. It will also highlight if there are any gaps in your knowledge so you can best practice, prepare and develop in time for your official test. This also gives you the opportunity to learn from your mistakes through practice. So after completing practice tests, review your answers and identify any recurring mistakes or areas of weakness so you can grow and develop from those mistakes. It also gives you more of a flair for time management. So if you do some practice, pay attention to the time that you have and try to stay within the time frame. If you find during your practice that you're struggling to contain yourself within the time frame, then you can identify and work on that in advance. 
In the real test, you'll be given a time frame to answer your questions. And it's always good to be wary of that throughout and plan ahead. So give yourself an appropriate time for each question just to make sure you can finish the test successfully. So we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about situational judgment preparation because this can be a little bit more challenging than preparing for the other types of testing we've discussed so far. So it is important to read the instructions carefully during a situational judgment test because situational judgment tests come in a variety of different formats. So the one you were sitting before may be different for the one you are sitting now. You also want to really understand the job role. So do some research on the company and the job role you're being hired for so you have a more thorough understanding of the type of person they are looking for, as this will have an impact on the decisions and judgments they will want to see from the questions they are asking. Also aim to understand the context of the question in relation to the role. So again, this is where researching and thoroughly understanding the role you're being hired for will be really useful, because the answer you choose should reflect the position you hold within the company. For example, a more junior employee would probably not be expected to delegate tasks, whereas if you are being hired for a management position, they may want to see some effective delegation in the situations they provide for you. Also, identify the skill or quality being assessed by the situation you are provided. Working out which soft skill or quality is being assessed in any given question will help you work out or choose the best response. And this comes back to why it's important to understand the job role, because you really want to understand the context of why they are providing you those situations and also what sort of judgments they want their candidates to make. So just a few more tips around situational judgments. So again, like the other tests, you always want to practice a range of situational judgment tests in advance prior to your official test. So practice as many questions as you can before the test to familiarize yourself with the types of questions and responses you are likely to be presented with. This will help you feel a lot more confident going into your test. And finally, aim to be yourself. So while an awareness of the qualities and traits a company is looking for will help you answer the questions more effectively, don't be tempted to select answers that are completely at odds with your true personality because fundamentally you may want to be in a role where you can act accordingly with integrity and honesty and you want to be in a role that you are a good fit for and a role where you can act with some form of integrity to how you would like to do that job. If you go at completely at odds with how you would respond to those judgments then it may not be the best fit of an organisation for yourself and what you are looking for in your next role. So finally, we're just going to finish off by looking at some psychometric test resources you can use to help you plan and prepare for your upcoming psychometric test. So here are some websites you can use to practice some psychometric tests, but also look at some example questions to help you gain some familiarity and confidence with the different types of tests that are used and the formats that they come in as well. So definitely take a look at some of these websites to help plan and prepare and practice for some upcoming tests. You can also use a website called Graduate First to help plan and prepare for an upcoming psychometric test. So this is really useful because it can provide a tailored approach to your preparation. So for example, you can pick the industry you are exploring and it will give you a variety of tests that are commonly used within that industry. So you can provide that more tailored approach to your preparation. So if we look on the screen here, we can see a few industries that you can select from. From then on, you can see a few different types of tests you can choose from. And then below, we have an example numerical reasoning test where it's given a graph with a data set and questions to interrogate that data set as well. So definitely give Graduate First a try to help with your preparation for any upcoming psychometric tests that you are involved in. And it covers all the different types of tests we've discussed in this session today. So Graduate First is accessible with your student login. So if you go to the home page, you'll be able to type in your student details and you should be able to log in with your university account. So just to summarize, we've covered in this session, what are psychometric tests, the types of psychometric tests that are commonly used, how you can prepare for a psychometric test, and also how you can practice a psychometric test.